in the world of healthcare, patient safety is always a top priority. From pre-surgical evaluations to post-operative care, every step is taken to ensure the well-being of patients. However, there is one concern that continues to pose a threat, surgical site infections. Welcome back to Zacco and our five-part mini course on HAIs. This video's topic will focus on surgical site infections. Surgical site infections, or SSIs, are a serious complication that can occur following a surgical procedure. These are also considered a type of healthcare-associated infection. These infections can range from minor to life-threatening and often lead to prolonged hospital stays, increased healthcare costs, and occasionally even death. The causes of surgical site infections can vary. Poor hand hygiene, improper sterilization techniques, and contaminated surgical instruments are just a few factors that contribute to the development of these infections. Additionally, patient factors such as obesity, diabetes, and compromised immune systems can also increase the risk of surgical site infections. What causes a surgical site infection? Let's break down this video into three main sections, preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative. Prior to a surgical procedure, the patient's overall health status should be considered. For instance, does the patient have any comorbidities? How is the patient's heart? Are they taking any medications? Past medical and surgical history should be clearly documented and communicated before any surgical procedures are performed. The patient's BMI should be documented as well. The presence of diabetes, heart problems, smoking, and obesity are risk factors for SSIs. The ASA score, or the American Society of Anesthesiologists score, is a score given to patients preoperatively a higher ASA score, usually above 3, have been linked to a higher occurrence in surgical site infections. The higher the score, the poorer the health status, thus the more susceptible to infections, including SSIs. Other preoperative measures to help prevent SSIs include showering the night before the surgery, removing excess hair in the surgical region. These are usually done by the patient in the comfort of their own home. For instance, you are a patient scheduled for an appendectomy tomorrow? The doctor will instruct you to take a shower the night before and to remove any hair present on your lower abdomen. Now you may be thinking, all this is great, but what about more urgent surgical procedures? There is no time for showering or hair removal. Well, then these precautions fall onto the healthcare team. An emergency surgical procedure is never scheduled, but the patient's skin is prepared with an antiseptic solution and hair is removed prior to the first incision. Furthermore, prior to the first incision in all cases, an antibiotic of the doctor's choice is started. This is a prophylactic antibiotic. Moving on to the operating room. This room is especially designed to minimize the possibility of infection. Furthermore, this is considered a red zone, meaning only necessary personnel are allowed in this area. Prior to entering the operating room, the surgeons must scrub in. This is a hand decontamination procedure done before every surgical procedure. As per the World Health Organization, this has been highly recommended as a way to significantly reduce the amount of microorganisms present on one's skin. Surgical scrubbing usually takes between three and five minutes in which every surface of the surgeon's hand is vigorously scrubbed with a special antiseptic soap. This is done in a specific technique to reduce the risk of contamination even further. After scrubbing in, the surgeon must not touch anything until they wear a sterile gown and gloves. Finally, after donning the sterilized PPEs, the surgeon can approach the patient in question. During surgery, bacteria present on the patient's skin or surrounding environment can access the surgical site, leading to an infection. These bacteria can also enter the body through medical devices like catheters or through surgical implants or even through improper surgical techniques. Thankfully, there are multiple strategies in place to prevent surgical site infections such as the ones mentioned previously. The site is then decontaminated with another special solution. Any hair in the area is removed by shaving the hair with a hair clipper. In addition, the patient is draped in sterilized cloths where only the incision site is visible. Finally, a sterilized scalpel is used to access the area of the procedure. 
Post-operative care is equally crucial in preventing surgical site infections. Patients are closely monitored for signs of infection, such as fever, pain, or redness around the surgical site. Antibiotics are prescribed to further reduce the risk of infection, and patients are educated on proper wound care and hygiene practices to prevent any complications. Moreover, monitoring a patient's blood glucose levels are another element in the prevention of SSIs. Studies have shown that higher blood glucose levels are linked to a higher risk of developing SSI. The proper identification of an SSI is vital to ensure overall patient safety. An SSI is identified by observing pain, redness, heat, or abnormal discharge from the surgical site. The presence of a fever postoperatively may indicate that an infection has begun to spread in the patient's body. The combination of all three sections, pre, intra, and postoperative, creates the infamous surgical site bundle, a vital tool in the prevention of SSIs. I was completely unaware of the risks associated with surgical site infections until I developed one myself. It was a challenging experience, but thankfully, my healthcare team acted promptly, and with proper treatment, I recovered well. However, I hope that by sharing my story, more people become aware of the importance of infection prevention measures. In the fight against surgical site infections, prevention is key. By emphasizing strict adherence to infection control practices, continuous education, and vigilant monitoring, healthcare professionals and patients can work together to minimize the incidence of these complications. Together, let's prioritize patient safety every step of the way. Thank you for watching this video. This is part two of a five-part series on healthcare-associated infections. If you haven't watched the first part, click above to watch the video. Subscribe to our channel to watch our next video on the third type of healthcare-associated infection, central line-associated bloodstream infections. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave any suggestions, requests, or questions in the comment section, or send us a message. To learn more about Zacco, visit our website, www.zacco-sa.com, or email us at admin at sacocom WhatsApp or call us at 966-565-405-419 to reach our experts for assistance in accreditation matters such as Sebahi, JCI, or Gahar. Follow us on social media where we post tips, tricks, and motivation for you on a regular basis. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified of our videos when we post them. Zacco, the power of expert consultations in the palm of your hands. Thank you.